All set? We're recording. Okay. Uh, good evening, folks. My name is John Chory. I am the chair of the Finance Committee in Harwich. Today is March 22nd, and we're meeting at 6.30 p.m. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to go over uh, the agenda, which has been posted on the town website. And I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, signify by saying your name. Uh, Karen. Karen Doucette. Mark, Mark Kelleher. Dan Chor. Angelo Avanti. Mark Amaras. Mark Am and John Chory. We have a quorum of uh, seven people. I mean, seven people. We have a five for man quorum. Uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, public comments and announcements. Anyone in the room? No one's here. Anyone on the line have a public comment? Uh, if you d if you do, please uh, speak up at any time. Dale, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, this is Dale. I okay. Can hear you just fine. Thank you. Great. And then and, and I forgot to ask. And Dale Kennedy is present, right? Here. Great. Thank you. So <laughs> so we have seven. I counted seven, but I just okay. Uh, welcome. Uh, moving down to item A, under new business, uh, I'll read the agenda item. Open meeting law complaint from Mr. Ronald Beatty, dated March 10th, 2022. Acknowledgement of the open meeting law complaint against the Finance Committee. We're here to discuss, respond uh, to any of the discussion. If anyone has questions, please ask. And it will probably take a vote on the uh, response uh, that we'll be sending, uh, I believe, to Mr. Beatty and to the... Uh, uh, Attorney General. Uh, with that, I'd like to open it up and uh, uh, read the. I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, reading today to get into the minutes. Uh, the Town of Harwich, this is the complaint. And uh, uh, members of the committee have all received a, a copy of the complaint. They have received uh, all the exhibits that are uh, mentioned in the, uh, in the complaint. And uh, okay, the Town of Harwich Finance Committee is in receipt of an open meeting law complaint submitted by Ronald, Mr. Ronald Beatty, dated March 10th. The complainant alleges that the committee violated the open meeting law by engaging in deliberations outside of the proper notice meeting. A copy of the complaint is enclosed. Enclosed. And this is, when I say enclosed, it's enclosed into the uh, response that uh, Mr. Beatty will receive. And it's labeled uh, exhibit, exhibit one. Exhibit one is the open meeting, official open meeting complaint that uh, Mr. Ronald Beatty uh, filed. Following receipt of the complaint, com com complaint on March 22nd, 2022, the committee met at a properly posted meeting notice for, the, for such purposes to discuss the complaint, consider an appropriate response, and deliberate over the allegations contained therein. The committee has, has carefully reviewed the allegations contained in the complaint and the following such discussions move to be authorized. This office to submit the following response on its behalf in accordance with General Law Chapter 30A, Section 23, and 940 Commonwealth of Mass uh, CMR, Commonwealth of Massachusetts Regulations 29.05. The complaint, the complainant alleges, uh, com uh, contends that immediately after the formal conclusion and adjournment of its Thursday, March 3rd, 2022 meeting, the Town of Harwich Finance Committee willfully and intentionally violated the open meeting law by engaging in illegal deliberations regarding the annual town budget outside of a properly noticed meeting, see Exhibit A. The committee, a volunteer public body, acknowledges this matter raised by the complainant and takes the matter seriously and appreciates the opportunity to clarify the events. And I just want to make it clear uh, that that night, uh, March 3rd, uh, there were two members of the, who were on the Finance Committee but were not in attendance. That would be Karen Doucette and Dale Kennedy. Named in the complaint also was uh, Tom Sherry, uh, a member of PASS. He was not, he's not a member of the Finance Committee now. Following its March 3rd meeting, the committee took a vote to adjourn. In the meeting, following a detailed and thorough discussion that lasted approximately one hour, 18 minutes, and 54 seconds. Uh, a video of this meeting can be reviewed at, uh, on, on, on the town's website, uh, Channel 18. Uh, Uh, 
Uh, following the adjournment of the meeting, one of the members noted his personal concerns, his uh, possible concerns, excuse me, with needing more information on forecasts for what he could remember for the 19, uh, for the 2023 revenues for its next discussion of the matter. Thereafter, the e emails were sent relevant uh, to town officials thanking the finance director for her presentation and to confirm previously scheduled joint meetings between the selectmen and the finance committee with department heads and two schools requesting more information on two topics. Uh, those two topics were the cultural center with regards to a capital plan and a business plan. Also discussed on lower, on this, a, a more discussion on lower forecast in revenues for FY23 versus FY21. And I'm gonna actually read those emails into the discussion a little later on. Thereafter, the committee described in substance the discussions that occurred in that meeting and explained the entire situation in its meeting for its March 3rd, 2022 meeting, a copy of which is attached and that's labeled Exhibit 2. Those meetings <coughs> were approved and are posted on our website. The committee clarified that all corrective, material, uh, all corrective and remedial action is being taken. To that end, the committee posted notice for a meeting of February, uh, March 15th, at which it held a substantive discussion for all the events that occurred after the adjournment of the meeting and the revised minutes with an explanation of such matters. A copy of the committee's agenda for March 15th is attached in this exhibit three. The committee also held a uh, substantive discussion it will be held in the substantive discussion tonight at its March 22nd meeting, at which it will address this complainant, including by reading into the record, the discussions of the two emails that were sent to the town administrator, the finance director, and the chair of the selectmen thereafter. And uh, those were not considered to be uh, a violation of open meeting law. There was not a quorum present for any of those emails and independently deliberate an open session for the public on all such matters. And uh, at that time now, I'll read the, the two emails uh, that I sent. Uh, this was after the meeting, after we had met for an hour and 18 minutes or so, discussing the town's, uh, Carol Coppola gave the, the committee an in-depth uh, discussion on the budget, uh, line item by line item. And uh, we had, I sensed a, a couple themes in the, in that meeting, and I just wanted to let Carol know. And so I'll read Carol's note. Uh, and it was in a, on that note to Carol, the, uh, March 4th, 2022, uh, it also CC'd uh, Joe Powers on it. Carol, on behalf of the Finance Committee and myself, I want to thank you for the in-depth budget review last night. It was very helpful to the Finance Committee to get a much better understanding of the various towns' operating budgets. I hope the town citizens watch the rerun of this meeting and they themselves will better understand the town budgets. On one topic that was discussed a lot during the meeting and the most was that what was that was being the possibility of raising forecasts on projected revenues. Would it be possible for me to talk with you? I would especially like to understand how the sequence and the effects of raising revenues or not raising revenues influence tax rate, free cash, the budget. I, I realize this is a very busy time for you, for you now. My schedule is very flexible and I would limit the discussion to one hour. I would think it would be better, I think I would have a better understanding of the science of revenue forecasting and municipal finance. And I feel that I could help the finance committee understand revenue forecasting. Thanks again for your time. It was a great meeting last night. Uh, and then after I sent that to Carol, about an hour later, uh, I sent an email to uh, uh, Michael McCaskill and Joe Powers. And I also CC'd on that note, uh, Carol Coppola, Brian Weiner, Karen Doucette, Mark Amaris, uh, Mark Keller, Angelo Palmonte, Dale Kennedy, and uh, Dale Delaney and Ellen Power, those uh, Ellen Powell. Those are two administrative assistants in Joe's office. And the subject was department heads meeting and more discussion requested. Uh, this was what I alluded to earlier. 
This was already a pre-scheduled meeting that we had set up uh, for March 10th and the 17th. Uh, it was just confirming that meeting uh, and a couple other topics from the Carroll presentation. And I addressed it, Michael and Joe. Carol gave an excellent presentation to the Finance Committee last night. Her explanation on the various town de departments operating budgets was very helpful to the Finance Committee. I asked all the Finance Committee members, and I, in, in, in uh, parentheses, I, I heard back from the majority of the members to send me the names of the town departments that they would still like to come in for a joint discussion on the Selectman's meeting and Finance Committee meeting on March 10th and 17th. The Finance uh, committee needs more information and discussion on two topics as I previously mentioned. The following is a list of those departments we would like to talk with and the two topics could be, could be possibly discussed in our joint meeting now that the finance committee uh, has re reduced their request for department heads from 11 down to 7 departments. Uh, the town departments and schools that I would have liked to have come in, in which they did do, uh, the four departments that are adding a new full-time head or converting a part-time head to a full-time. The Health Department, Council on Aging, Housing Affordable Trust, the, culture, the Director of Cultural Affairs, for an understanding of the additional needs for a full-time head. And the two schools that I wanted to come in is the Cape Cod Regional Tech School and the Montemoy Regional School District. And the Fire Department, mostly on the Schaefer Grant, if the selectmen decide to accept this grant. The two topics for discussion, use of the cultural center to include, but not limited to, a business plan, a staffing plan, a cultural uh, capital plan for at least five to ten years, if possible, a self-sustaining plan. The second discussion uh, topic was more discussion on lower forecast revenue, for, uh, on the for forecasting of lower revenues for FY23 versus FY21 actuals. And then I have attached a note that I received from Brian Reiner on this subject. The note explains the request better. Uh, and Brian's note, who was a member of the Finance Committee at the time of the March 3rd meeting, but he has since resigned, but I was uh, advised to, to read the whole email that I sent in. Brian's note, and this is Brian, not myself or anyone else. In my opinion, this budget has been built for a single purpose to sustain free cash at at the expense of taxpayers. In the, in the present form, it leaves less than $200 in free cash. If approved for FY23, I am also trying to determine how the proposed revisions to the tax rate that Carol shared in the Chronicle are being calculated and how they might increase the flow of free cash in such a revenue-conserved budget if the numbers come in as equal in at or equal to FY21. I personally agree with Angela's point of last night when he suggested we might rationally uh, project department revenues higher in the earlier stages since all indications that the summer will be a record breaker for visitors and then if needed reduce before the budget is closed. Having rerun the numbers myself yesterday using FY21 to budget for 23 since 22 was a pandemic year I came up with uh, an increase of about $4 million going to free cash. Without enormous amounts of free cash, the capital requirements for 20, FY24 would be unattainable. It seems clear to me that this has to happen. So much in this budget doesn't make sense to me. Why is the administ administrator proposing adding three new petitions during such a challenging financial period, and why would the Board of Selectmen ever allow free cash to be drowned down to its present levels. I have not personally seen that uh, in my time in Harwich. Uh, I feel we have an obligation to the taxpayers to press these questions, so I do want to make certain that the administrator uh, administration uh, explains stuff that appears before us. To me, the real issue is the strategic approach to the numbers. That's really what I'd like to understand more clearly. And that was kind of what I spelled out in the, e the email to Carol and the email to, to uh, just read to Michael, that we t talked heavily in that meeting about, uh, I can write this stuff down, uh, heavily about uh, the forecasted revenues for 23 versus 21. 
And uh, since those March 3rd meetings and the March 10th meetings and the March 17th meetings, the selectmen have readjusted their revenue forecasts up, I believe to the tune of about $650,000. Uh, they're still below FY21, but it's, it's a good start. And having understanding now the free cash policy of the selectmen, I understand those numbers. Uh, and it's a very conservative number, which I agree with. Uh, Moving on back to the, the dialogue here. The, the committee also, okay, read, I've, uh, okay uh, violations of the open meeting uh, law may be cured by independent deliberate action taken at a, sub, a subsequent meeting as to such as merely a ceremony acceptance and ratification of action taken in the violation of the law. As the division has concluded, the fact that the public body has cured the violation is significant because it gets to the heart of what the law is meant to accomplish, transparency in government. And that's all we're doing, is making sure we have transparency in government. I believe 100% of that. Here the committee cured any violation to the open meeting law by its independent, deliberative, and non-ceremonial actions at least two sub subsequent meetings of March 15th and 22nd, as well as detailing the substance of in the March 3rd minute meetings. Finally, the committee would like to express, expressly denies that any such violation was intentional. The committee takes very seriously its obligations under the open meeting law, and to that end has been very transparent in its efforts to remediate, remediate any discussion at the end of the meeting at issue, which it had viewed as a simple ministerial action item for follow-up and not a substantial discussion that is believed to be in violation of the open meeting law. There were no votes taken. There was any, any long discussions. We only spoke for about a few seconds past when the cameras went out. Uh, I have read into the minutes what people have recollections of that meeting was about, and then we left. Further, the town has scheduled open meeting training, and this is well before the March 3rd meeting. This was this open meeting training for all public bodies to take place this summer. And I just want to stress that again, that before this March 3rd uh, open meeting violation for the Finance Committee, the town has already had taken, or is taken, proactive measures and it's scheduled uh, uh, open meeting training for all public bodies to take place at some time this summer. Uh, that is the complaint. Uh, I'd like to open it now for discussion from the board if they have any questions or most importantly, any clarifications of what I had just read. Uh, I sent out copies of all the uh, exhibits, everyone. Uh, you see what all the exhibits are. I have sent out the two emails from Carol. Uh, I sent to Carol and Joe and then to Michael and yourselves were copied on that on, on the fourth on that one. And, uh, and the minute meetings that which we'll, we'll get to later uh, after the next agenda item is to uh, approve the March 15th meeting minutes. Uh, does anyone have anything to discuss further or clarification? I'm happy to make sure we get into the original uh, response that we can get to, uh, to Mr. Beatty. Uh, Karen? Anything? I no. mean, you weren't even here, never mind. No, I wasn't, but I've read everything and it's seems okay, fine I'm to sorry. me. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Dale is the same way. Again, Dale and Karen were not here. Uh, Mark Keller, any? No, no, no further comments. Questions? I think you've uh, covered it very well. Thank you for all the work you've done. Okay. Uh, Dan? And My only comment is that uh, <coughs> Mr. Kakunas in his statement made a statement that Brian Weiner stated that after the meeting was adjourned, that Brian stated, now we can begin the real meeting. And that is totally false and totally misleading to the public. It, it, and that's, uh, that was, uh, I don't know where Mr. Kakunas stated that I heard I was at the meeting I heard that but but then all I'm reacting to yeah I, I know but but all we're reacting to Dan is what we saw what we saw on the video that's all I can react to and I looked at the video and I didn't hear that but I heard and I transcribed what I heard oh know. I clearly heard it oh from Mr. Kakunas yes. Oh, yes yes but I don't know where maybe I don't know I can't comment on what Mr. Kakunas said yeah okay no, I can't uh, yeah, okay. yes thank you uh, Angela and that, that's it's uh, upsetting that a person can make such a statement because he implies 
by making that statement, now the meeting can be, now the real meeting can yeah. be. Again, I, 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 I don't want to comment on, on, on Mr. Kakunas, please, because I do not know. Sharing my thoughts. Good. Thank you, Dan. I, I, and Angelo? I have nothing to add. Mark? No further comments. Okay. Uh, with no further comments or discussion, and Dale, I know you weren't here either, but uh, if you have anything to say. It's just that, you know, I, I agree with what Dan just said. I, I heard Kakunis' statement, and I immediately went to watch the video and didn't see that that language take place. And it's just kind of, it's infuriating that he can make a public statement like that. It's gone into their minutes, the public heard it, and, you know, the retraction would be on page 10 of the Chronicle, you know? I, again, Dan, I, 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 did, I can't speak to what Mr. Kakunis said or what he meant by it. I do not know. I, I don't even go by the video. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone else on the call? Uh, we have a few people on the call. If anyone else has a question, I'm happy to, to take a question. Okay. Hearing no further discussion, uh, I'd like to take a, a vote on what I just read into it. This will all be typed up. and. Uh, and then uh, we'll approve it at some point. I'm not sure, but you know, I'll get back to you. But we had to get this uh, complaint uh, acknowledged in, in our response to it. Uh, and I get you don't have to vote, Karen Dale. Well, you can just abstain. We abstain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd like to have someone make a motion. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the open meeting law complaint materials? Yeah, yeah, I guess that's um, response, response. Response to yeah. the open meeting complaint, complaint. from Mr. Ron, Ronald Beatty, dated March 10th, 2022. Is that a second? Second to repeat that? I'm sorry. I want to make a motion to vote on the response to the open meeting law complaint filed by Mr. Ronald Beatty, dated March 10th, 2022. And it was seconded by Mark Keller. Seconded. Uh, all those in favor, Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Angelo? Aye. Mark? Aye. And I'm an aye. That's uh, five votes there. And uh, Karen? Abstain. And Dale? Abstain. Okay. Uh, great. Thank you, folks. It's a very serious matter that I'm taking very seriously. Uh, I've, I've spent a lot of time working on this with uh, the town attorney, uh, Janelle Austin from KP Law. Uh, I will get with her tomorrow uh, with what I said and with my, my notes, and, uh, and uh, we'll get back to with the next step on the fire. Yeah. Yeah. I would just like to compliment you on the yeoman's job that you did, not only with preparing the written material, but reacting. ASAP to ensure that the public was aware of the fact that we didn't do anything to intentionally violate the open meeting law. Well, thank you, Dan. That that's that that, that means a lot. You know, it's just I didn't realize it, and it, I do realize it. I saw the tape, like a lot of uh, folks have seen, uh, or video. I guess is, is this is proper term now, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the video, and it clearly the meeting was adjourned, and clearly we spoke. Uh, I transcribe what I had heard in that tape or video, and, uh, and we'll do what we have to do. I quickly acknowledged it, and, uh, and we'll move on, you know. So thank you all for, uh, for that. Okay, on well, the next agenda item is a problem with so many, for a second. <laughs> so many papers up here. Uh, next one is... Uh, Discussion and approval of meeting minutes for March 15th, 2022. Make a motion. So I'd like to make a motion to discuss and approve the meeting minutes from the March 15th, 2022 Finance Committee meeting. Second? I'll second. Okay. Motion's been uh, made and seconded. Uh, I have sent you copies of the minute meetings. Uh, if anyone has any questions on those uh, minutes, uh, let me know. If not, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Any discussion? Dale, I get, were you here? Who? Uh, was Dale here? Yeah, I, I was here. 
was there. Okay. Uh, any questions there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no questions. Okay. Oh, I see. I just got the minutes up now. Okay. Uh, somebody make a, we make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. I think I just already did. Oh, so did you made a motion? Yep, okay. we already did. Second. Okay. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor of uh, uh, approving the min minutes of March 15th, 2022? Uh, Karen? Aye. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Angelo? Aye. Mark? Aye. And Dale? Aye. Aye. And I'm an aye also. Thank you. Uh, let me get over to the agenda here. Okay. Uh, the next three agenda items, C, D, E, and F, uh, can really be taken kind of all at once. They're all inclusive, and they're all pretty much covered in the town warrant. Uh, and we had a selections meeting was last night. It was a three and a half hour meeting. A lot of stuff was covered. Uh, a lot of petitioners came in and spoke. Uh, the selectmen vote on a number of Warren articles. They, they moved uh, monies from the capital budget over to the operation budget and then operation budget over to the capital budget. And I, I don't have an accurate <laughs> what transpired that night, but we had three members there. Karen, Mark Keller, and myself were there. And uh, we'll try best uh, to do that. Uh, of what the selectmen spoke about, we do have a little bit of a scorecard up here. And I think the best way to proceed uh, is to just go to the Warren book, uh, the most recent one that we have, which was uh, given to, uh, I, I just had it uh, Sunday. I just got it Sunday. I got it out of the packet from the selectmen. I had it printed up and disseminated to all the members. Uh, presently, there's roughly uh, 57 articles on the warrant. And I say roughly because it's still a draft form. Yes. Uh, it's, it's nothing's been set yet. And I think the best way for us to do this is, is we all have the book here, is to go down through the book. And in, in the book, they're not numbered, unfortunately. Uh, but Karen has a spreadsheet here where they are numbered. And uh, I'll just read the number uh, and, and the article, uh, and then uh, we can discuss it. Because I'd like to vote as many as we can tonight. Uh, and Angela, if you could give me a hand, and Dan, your, your uh, veterans in the, in the finance committee. I think we left off on uh, the part-time housing coordinator on page 31 in the warrant. I'm going to start at number one, though, and go through, oh, oh you okay. know, instead of jumping oh, around. That's the best way to go, I think, just go down right through them. Uh, I mean, they'll, they're, they're closely tied to the warrant, but the, the warrant does not have uh, any numbers attached to them. So it's, it's really hard to say, but it, this is, Karen did a pretty good, very good job of, of doing it. And uh, so we'll just start, and some of these we've already voted on. Uh, obviously, we can't vote on ones that have... Uh, money, no money attached to them, but there is money associated with them yet, or ones that we feel we can't. And that's where I'm going to rely on Dan and Mark and, uh, and Angelo to if, remember those articles from past meetings. Uh, the first one was this, and I'll read the, the article's name, Town Officers and Committees. We did vote on that one. Uh, we did vote on the Town Officers and Committees. The next one was uh, reports, uh, no. Uh, Do you uh, want to just say what we vote? The conclusions? No, no, no we've okay. already voted okay. on it. Uh, the next one is elected official salaries. It's, that's labeled Article 3 in there, but <laughs> it happens to be Article 3. Anyway, uh, well, that was I'll read the article, uh, and I think we can vote on this one. Uh, okay. Elected, and, and if by chance we vote on something tonight, and it proves that it was inaccurate, either a dollar amount or something to that effect, we will, will we consider and vote the appropriate number and, and verbiage. Uh, elected officials' salary, Article 3. To see if the town will vote the salaries of elected off officials of the town for fiscal year commencing January 1, 2022 and ending June 30th, 2023, as follows, and to act fully thereon Estimated cost is $108,000 and 
thousand dollars, four hundred eighty-four dollars. Uh, five selectmen each receiving twenty-four hundred dollars. Moderator receiving a thousand dollars. Wastewater and water commissioners each receiving a thousand dollars. Library trustees each receiving a thousand dollars, and the town clerk receiving eighty-three thousand four hundred eighty-four dollars. Uh, Make a motion. Or, uh, make a motion. And um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the ele elected official salaries warrant, to, yeah. equaling an estimated cost of one hundred and eight thousand dollars, one hundred and eight four hundred and eighty four, one hundred eight thousand four hundred and eighty four dollars. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Now we're open for discussion. Go ahead. Warrant. Go ahead. Yeah. The warrant says that we are voting to accept and adopt. Should we use that verbiage so that we're consistent with what's in a warrant? Sure. So I make a motion to accept and adopt the elected official salaries warrant. Article. Article. <laughs> to see if the town will vote the salaries of the elected officials of the town for fiscal year commencing Jan July 1st, 2022 and ending June 30th, 2023. And the estimated cost is $108,484. Okay. Second. Okay, any discussion? Yeah, I have uh, a question. Sure. What, can you explain the town clerk dollar? Is that? That's, that's a sal, it's, a, it's elected position. The town clerk's elected. Yes. So these are all the salaries of all the elected officials in town. Oh, that's their total salary. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. It doesn't mean town clerk salaries established by. Uh, okay. Thank you. And, and Carol and Mark, if you're new to the committee. Please ask any question uh, that you may see for clarification. <laughs> uh, hearing more discussion, uh, I'd like to take a vote. Karen. Aye. Mark. Aye. Dan. Aye. Angelo, Mark, aye. Dale, aye, and I'm an aye. That's seven to zero. Uh, again, folks, uh, maybe listening in. Uh, anyone has a question, please uh, to speak up, and uh, we'll try to answer your question. Thank you. Okay, moving down. The next one is the town operating budget, we, which we will uh, move on. The Montemoy school budget. Uh, we will move on. The selectmen uh, did discuss it briefly tonight, uh, last night. And they are waiting to hear back uh, from the Montemoy school system. As most of us know, we were in a joint session with them on the 17th. Uh, they've been asked by the selectmen. And I must emphasize, too, for folks out there, that this budget belongs to the selectmen. It does not belong uh, to the Finance Committee. Our role is just advisory only. Uh, we're, we, we get all the information that the selectmen have. We look at it, analyze it, and try to come up with uh, suggestions uh, that might help uh, help the town uh, but again we're just advisory only it is the selectmen's budget the selectmen asked uh, Montemoy schools to uh, see if they can reduce their assessment to us and we're waiting to hear back we'll move on down the next one was okay I'm, now this is where it gets a little confused. next one was uh, Montemoy schools okay the next one which we're not going to vote on it all is uh, an article to uh, un uh, the school committee is proposing a new uh, allocation formula to the two towns uh, and the town both towns have to approve this new allocation it's basically that each town is going to take on their town's elementary school operating expenses and capital expenses for their, for those schools to remain in their towns. Uh, the town, the second haven't voted on it yet, There's, and, and, uh, and we haven't voted on it, but that's what that one is. The next article, I believe, yeah, I'm not sure, but the next article, I believe, recommends accepting this new funding formula, and if we accept the new funding formula, There'll be a number in there. The number that's in there right now, I don't, I don't believe is the correct number, uh, from what I recollect uh, from my uh, times I spent with the school committee understanding their budget. But so we'll move on to the next one. 
the next one is the Cape Cod Regional Tax School. We've already approved that budget. Okay, now this is where it gets a little, a little, nope, it doesn't care. It follows true to form, Karen. Uh, the next one is the Water Department budget. And maybe if, uh, maybe you can just make the motion, Karen, and, and read that. I'll, I'll let you do the reading of the article, okay? You want me to read it? Yeah, instead of me reading, and then you, you just want to make a motion on this article, accept okay. and adopt. I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt the Water Department budget. And the article reads, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds or borrow such sums of money as may be required to defray the Water Department operating budget for fiscal year 2023 and to act fully thereon by request of the Water and Wastewater Commission. The estimated cost is $4,255,900. We get a second. I'll second. Okay, we get the motion has been made and seconded. This is the uh, water department budget, obviously, uh, and so folks know that the the water department is is what what, the, what is called in the town an enterprise fund. Uh, there's two town. I mean, there's two departments in the town that are enterprise funds, and they're, they're basically their own separate entity within the town of Harwich, and all their revenues are derived from water revenues and eventually uh, wastewater revenues and we'll get to when we get to the wastewater I'll say eventually and I'll, I'll tell why what that means but this water department budget is all, all uh, funded by water rates uh, and this is what they need for various salaries expenses their debt indirect costs OPED and as Karen said it totals uh, what she said any uh, discussion or clarification on the water department Jim, I have a question. Sure. Um, what are the source of the funds? It just says to transfer from available some funds. Are they, are they implying that they're transferred from the fees that the water department collects? Correct. Or yes. It's, it's what they call retained earnings. Okay, so these aren't coming from the general funds of the no. town? No, they're not. Is that correct, Angelo? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's like I say, they're an enterprise. Like their own little company out there, they they, mm -hmm. they sell water and, and they get paid for the water and, and they run their operation. Any other questions? Okay. Thank no, you. Dad. Just say thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Karen, uh, any questions? No questions. No questions? No. Uh, hearing no further discussion, are they to vote? Karen. Um, aye. Mark. Aye. Dan. Aye. Angelo. Aye. Mark. Aye. Dale. Aye. And John is I at 7 0. Uh, next one is the water department budget. Uh, waste, excuse me, excuse me, wastewater, wastewater department. And uh, please correct me, especially on dates. I'm getting, I'm getting a problem with dates and last names, as we all know. So, <laughs> Karen. <laughs> so, I, I'd like to make a motion that we accept and adopt the wastewater department budget article to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds or borrow such sums of money as may be required to defray the wastewater department operating budget for fiscal year 2023 and to act fully thereon by request of the waste and wastewater commission the estimated cost is two million three hundred fifty seven thousand and nineteen dollars we get a second second motion has been made and seconded uh wastewater is just like the uh, water department it's an enterprise fund, and eventually uh, they will be uh, self-sustaining like the water department. And when I say eventually, I don't know when that's going to be. No one will know. <laughs> I mean, the tremendous amount of, of uh, cost to put these sep septic and sewers in, as we all know, septic sewer systems in is tremendous. Uh, the good news is that flow has actually started flowing to Chatham. I believe there's two customers hooked up right now. Uh, so things will, will, uh, will move smoothly, I guess. Uh, and <laughs> no, no, no pun intended there, but, uh, uh, and, uh, and for, for the time being, uh, what's in, in this budget, it doesn't say there percentage wise, but this is one of the budgets when we spoke to Carol, it was up 357% over last year. And the main reason for that 
was their line item of, of debt of $1,819,824. And this is the debt, principal and interest, on those feeding, putting pipes in the grounds and pump stations. And that's going to continue for the foreseeable future. Uh, hearing other than that, no discussion? I'll take a vote. Uh, John, I have yep. a question. Yeah. It, it's basically the same question as the, as the water department budget, but I assume the wastewater is not collecting adequate fees to pay for their budget. So where is the funding coming from? The, the, the expenses, the, 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 the debt is being paid out of the debt service, off the, out of the operating <laughs> budget. It's a transfer. Just coming out of the general. Yes. Yeah. The general. <coughs> yeah. Account. Correct. It's th this number. If you looked at the debt schedule on the operating budget, <laughs> this number would be a, pot, a component of that total, and it's just being transferred uh, to the wastewater department for now, and, uh, and eventually. Gotcha. Thank you. The intent is to be self-sufficient. I, I don't know how long that'll take, uh, but that's a good question. I'll. Uh, I could ask Dan Pelletier, the superintendent, and and I bet he knows the answer on that too. So, uh, yeah, Kale. Uh, I mean, Karen. Oh, we voting? Oh, yeah. Aye. Uh, Mark. Aye. Aye. Mark. Aye. Dan. Aye. I mean, Dale. Excuse me. <laughs> Dan, Mark. I'm sorry. Again, I told you I'm bad with names. Okay. Yeah, uh, next one on. See, this is where it gets a little screwy right now. Uh, I just, yeah, I the moved, next I one is uh, the in our warrant book, it's placeholder, placeholder lease purchase agreements. Uh, I don't know if the, page. pardon? 15. 15. 15. 15. 15 in the, in the book. We're, we're following the book, Dale, <coughs> by, by, uh, by warrant. This, again, there's not, they're not numbered, so we're just going to read the, the warrant name. Okay. And the next one is, is yeah. lease payment. Okay agreements. Uh, I do not know what what that is, so we'll, we'll uh, hold that one. Uh, the next one is uh, accept the capital budget. I do not know what that is right now. It changed uh, substantially last night. Uh, and capital uh, articles that will hold there also that changed a lot we did a lot of moving around the selectmen did a lot of moving around on that last night uh, the next one uh, is the the peg account or the public education and government this is channel basically channel 18 and this is sub uh, this is totally su uh, su uh, su sustainable by its by the revenues they receive from the uh, Comcast uh, there is Usually a number there, there is no number there, so we'll hold off on that one right now. Yeah. Uh, the green community uh, utilities, this is part of uh, the uh, capital items which, 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 we, which we passed over. So we're going to pass over on that one just because yeah, we, we moved things last night and I I'm not 100% sure which one's moved or not, and I don't, I don't want to take a Yeah, a that risk. may change. I wouldn't yeah. vote on that. So we won't vote on the green community one. We won't vote on the wastewater. We won't vote on the stormwater. Uh, no, you skipped. What about the weight room? Yep, you yeah. skipped. 15. Yeah, you skipped um, Yeah, 15. that's the one I, I just said we're not going to vote on that. You said so waste, room? Not What did I say? You said waste. Wait? Waste. Okay, weight room, I meant. So Sorry. Weight room? We're not voting. Yeah. Okay. Waste, I, I say, or weight? Said waste. Waste, okay. So it's John's $30,000 for the weight room equipment. You don't want to vote? No. Uh, I just assume not. That'll be an easy one. Once we get a firm list, Karen, because okay. things shifted around too much, and, okay. uh, and I, I don't know which one's going to be which. And I think there'll be easy ones to vote on. And okay. I, I'm sure yeah, no Joe. Joe uh, replacement of the bullet vest. I mean, that is in the warrant book, but again, I, I want to. That's on the list of uh, capital items, and I'll just. I want to hold on the capital items until we get a firm. Okay. Uh, because that yeah, may change. That was moving around. Yeah. yeah. So we'll hold off on that one. Uh, the dispatch cent central Absolutely. battery backup, we'll hold on. Road maintenance and improvements, we'll hold on that one. That's usually a one for one uh, article where we town uh, votes $700,000 and we apply for chapter 90 or 70? Chapter 90? 
Chapter 90 Roadworks, Roadworks. and the town uh, state matches it dollar for dollar. But I don't see a number there, so I don't know what. Yeah, what no, would... there's no number. I can't go okay, so we got the list. Uh, next one on on the list is the voting. Uh, we can. I, I feel. Well, that was on the list too, I believe, wasn't it? I thought they discussed it and maybe voted on it last night. Did they show the count? Right. No. They no. just no. The the dispatch center battery backup? No, no, the, no, no, no. The, the voting, voting tabulation. Oh, the voting tabulation. Yeah, I thought we could vote on that one. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I think we can. Yeah, that's a pretty, a pretty, uh, that's a capital. They did thing. not talk about removing it. Let's yeah, that one. that's right. That one. Uh, we can, and what that is, is the town's clerk uh, needs new voting machines. And it's, uh, I'll let Karen read that article. It's from the easy. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt the new voting tabular equipment article uh, by the request of the Board of Selectmen is estimated cost of $75,000. Seconded. Okay, uh, this, these are new voting machines for the town. Uh, this will be voted on the town uh, at, the, at the annual town meeting. And I, don't, I, I forget how long they're going to take, but they, they're not going to be ready for the May, uh, May election anyway. So, okay. Uh, any other questions on that? Uh, all those in favor of the new voting machines? Karen? Aye. Mark? Aye. D Dan? Aye. Aye. Angelo? Mark? Aye. Dale? Aye. Okay, that's, a, that's a okay. Let me just let the officials. Just making some notes here. Uh, next water is wastewater design. There's no number, so we'll uh, we'll hold on that one. What is that? Uh, what's the? No. This is where it gets. Uh, according to the book, Karen, the next one is purchase. Equipment and vehicles. I yeah. see it further down, but that's okay. Yeah, that's it's okay. Just, they, they, I followed the order in the table um, of contents. Table of contents. Yeah. So. I did, yeah. Why don't we read this one, okay? Which one? The purchase equipment and vehicles for department. What, what's so I, that's. Yeah. I don't think we should do that. Yeah, I don't either. That's right. I, that's, you're absolutely right. Because I think it should be in capital. But yeah, I believe you're right. Yeah. Snow and ice. Uh, I don't know. Why don't we hold? I, you want to hold on that one too? I think. I, I viewed it as we're gonna have. It's 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 already spent. It's a deficit, so mm -hmm. we're gonna have to cover it. So I thought we should vote on it. But what do you guys think? Is that an amount that they clarify at the very end? This is as of Sunday when we got this. So I, I assume this it's, is it's like a, some of the numbers don't get like nailed down until no, right right before yeah, the special or something. Yeah, we we could wait we, if yeah. we think that. Why might don't we hold on this we one? We can wait. Yep. Okay. Uh, collect the bargaining or no uh, yeah. fund. We're, we're, again, we're going by the book in order, not by yeah. by Karen's chart here. Uh, fund prior years unpaid bills. There's no number there. So uh, we'll, there's. Or excuse me. Wait a minute. Yeah, there's no number there. I saw that in another document at five thousand dollars. That was in the document that's at the back of the. Um... Hold on. Yeah, but we'll, we'll go by what the warrant okay. says. Okay. You know, All right, so we'll wait. Yeah, we'll wait on that too. I mean, it'll it'll be an easy one to bill. Okay, so that's. Uh... Yeah, the cost is not in the warrant. Right. Yeah. Correct. Okay, the next one is promote the town of Harwich. And. Can I want me to give you my perspective on that? It was uh, removed from the capital plan last night, so. I think, I think, I think what they removed, though, Karen, was the beautification oh. of Harwich, not this one. Oh, okay, there's that'd be two, great. There's yeah, two articles. Great. Okay. Uh, the, it was the beautification of, I believe, Harwich Center or, or something like that, yeah. and that's what they removed. Okay. Or promote or something to do with Harwich Center, I believe. This is this is this, this is, has no estimated cost, correct? No, we'll, we'll pass. This is a Again, uh, was promote Harwich. Else, but I think we yeah, this is up. this is a, an annual one to the Howard uh, Chamber of Commerce, and it's usually thirty thousand dollars. But we'll hold on this one. Okay. Okay. Now we're on page twenty-two for those following along in the book. Uh, supplemental 
Okay. Uh, we'll hold on this one also. We'll hold on this one. Uh, herring fisheries, Mark's favorite. We already voted on that one, Mark. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one was pref uh, wait, uh, the Hish fisheries, a change, selectmen to select board. Uh, is that even on your list? Oh, there it is. I yeah. see it. Uh, so it's playing on my list, and I don't think there's a cost associated. So I thought there's, maybe there's no could. cost, but we'll let the speed uh, select since it affects them directly. Mm -hmm. We'll let them. They didn't vote on it. They did not vote on it last night. So uh, we'll let them uh, discuss that. Okay. Uh, next one on in the book after change the select board is. Uh, this one right here. Placeholder dot master. Okay. Mode. Yep. So. They didn't act on this last they night. Did, yeah. So I don't think we yeah. can. Yeah. Why don't we hold off on that one also? Uh, we'll hold off on the next one. Oh, let me see to check the book first. Make sure it is the next one. Yep. Yeah, they haven't voted on these next yep. two. So we'll hold on that one. Uh, next one is chapter 59, section 5. I'll hold on that one. Housing advocate. Uh, they didn't vote on it last night, and we'll hold ourselves, because uh, this is part of the, the operating budget which has been, hasn't been finalized yet. Uh, we'll, we'll know more on that uh, coming up. So, we'll so just as a, a point of reference, yeah. so they did, for, just our, for those who weren't there at the meeting last night, there were job descriptions proposed at the selectmen meeting last night, and the Board of Selectmen approved the actual job descriptions, mm -hmm. so, but we haven't gotten so far as to approve the a warrant. And then there was some discussion, too, in the meeting on whether or not, since it's a brand new position, there's three brand new positions. Yeah, that's uh, the other part of it. The housing advocate, the cultural director of cultural affairs, and the uh, cost, uh, cost of living, <laughs> council, council on aging, aging yeah. uh, person. There's right. three. And there was some discussion, because I had heard, and I see it here, that it, since they're new positions, they had to be in the warrant. And uh, there was some discussion last night that they didn't have to be in the warrant, and they're going to be checking out that. So we'll, we'll hold on those two positions right there. And the Council on Aging was an existing position, so it doesn't. No, it wasn't existing. I thought Joe said it was. Uh, he, he, he did say, he's mentioned something about a staffing plan. Yeah. But it's, the Council on Aging is a brand new position. The one that's a part-time position that they're converting to full-time is for the health agent. Oh, okay. And that one didn't need to go to town floor. Oh, perfect. But we'll, we'll get clarification on, on that also. The next one was Harwich, and I believe we can vote on this one. The selectmen did vote on this one, uh, if that's the next one. Nope. Road maintenance, we skipped over that. Let's sync up the book here. Uh, housing advocate. Okay, we're on page 26 at Homedale, and we're talking about about third of the way down. Harwich water uh, dependent structures. And <laughs> when I first saw that, I thought it was something to do with water tanks, but uh, it isn't. So I'll, I'll explain. Uh, entertain a motion. Is there no cost associated with this? So we no, there's no cost. Okay, so and, the, and the selectmen did vote on it. This is the one where they did yep. the five year. Yeah, you'll have to explain yeah. this one to everybody. So I would like. Sorry. <coughs> I will explain what they said. Yeah. Because it, okay. Um, okay. I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt the Howard, the place over the Howard water dependent structures article to see if the town will vote to amend the Howard water dependent structures bylaw, chapter 304 of the code of the town of Howard by request of the Conservation Commission. And there's no cost associated to this. Do you get a second? Second. Second. Okay. Go ahead, Karen. So, now we're open discussion. Yeah. So important to know that the board of selectmen accepted and adopted this article last night, but with the 
caveat that it, it would only go on the warrant if the moratorium language is removed from that. So correct. Yeah. I so can, I can explain it in more detail. Yeah. So you can explain that. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 did, what what is what I learned? What Harwich water dependent structures are? They're docks. Is what they are. Docks that go into the river. Specifically, no. this is on the Herring River. Uh, folks that have waterfront property but do not have a dock uh, have to apply for a dock, and they they want to put a moratorium on new docks right now because of what the water I mean, the conservation commission uh, deems uh, that affects the shell beds, the eelgrass, and uh, and there was much discussion on this. The conservation commission was in there last night. Uh, there were consultants online talking to this uh, uh, article. Uh, the selectmen sought and received a legal opinion from the town council on this, John Giorgio. Uh, there, and there is a potential for if they impose a five-year moratorium, uh, the, the town could be sued for that. So the selectmen didn't want to include that in, in the article and would only approve the article if that was removed uh, by in the article. That was removed from the article, uh, and it's a lengthy article. I mean, you, you, can, you can get the information. I mean, there's pages and pages of what the other articles mean. I do not know what it means, but, uh, but it's, it's basically to approve uh, the request of the Conservation Commission but without the five-year moratorium on the docks. And Mark, was that your recollection of what they said last night on that one? About removing the five-year moratorium, yeah. yeah. Okay. And Karen, that's Yes. It. Yeah. That was the main uh, topic, and it was removed from the article. And the reason was because they're proposing to do a study, but they want the select board thinks that you need to do the study before you put a moratorium on yes. docks yeah. and decks. So that's what was discussed. Uh, any other discussion? Uh -huh. Yeah, my understanding, John, was yeah. that uh, in the final analysis, this moratorium was only going to impact three families who had already applied to have docks built. So, you know, there's there's already a ton of docks along the Herring River. So to disallow three families to have a dock indefinitely just seemed like it, it wasn't going to solve the problem. Right, and that was my understanding of the discussion. That, but but also, Dale, if they in, imposed the five-year yeah. moratorium and no one had applied yet, uh, that's where the, the potential of lawsuits could come in. So uh, yeah. Yeah. It, that's my understanding of it. That's why I heard it. Uh, hearing no further discussion, uh, I'd like to entertain a vote. Karen, aye. Mark, aye. Dan, aye. Angelo, Mark, uh, nay. Nay. Okay. Uh, Dale. Aye. Aye, and I'm an aye. That's uh, six to one. Next one is on the on the booklet is the Harwich. I'll let Karen read it. But Hold it's, on. Uh, she's updating our score sheet here. <laughs> I'm get it. Thank I'm you. And it's it's a great way f for us. If we had article numbers, it would help a lot. But uh, <laughs> all right. So this is the wetlands protection. Yep. File. I'd like to make a motion to adopt and accept the placeholder dash Harwich Wetlands Protection Bylaw article to see if the town will vote to amend the Harwich Wetlands Protection Bylaw Chapter 310 of the Code of the Town of Harwich uh, by request of the Conservation Commission. And there's so zero cost. Zero cost. And yeah. this was approved, um, sorry, accepted and adopted last night by the select, select uh, board. You get a second? Second. Okay, now we're open for discussion. Uh, as Carol, I'm Carol. I don't know why I call you Carol, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, uh, the selectmen approved this uh, five to zero, I believe, last night. Uh, it's just amending uh, Wetlands Protection Acts. I'm not 100% sure what the amendments are, but it's there. So, uh, I think it had something to do with the setbacks. I remember a 50 foot. Uh, yeah, increasing it to 60 or something. Very complicated. But uh, it didn't seem to be contentious with the people in the audience. They were more. For the in docks. there for the moratorium, so yeah. I, yeah. Should we wait for the language? Pardon? Should we wait for the language? If you'd like to, we can. I mean, it's like four or five, six pages, but we can wait. And I did see the language at some point. Uh, 
It may be in one document I sent you, but we can wait, Mark. That's an easy one to wait for. Okay. Uh, hearing no further discussion and, and Mark's uh, point of waiting, we'll, we'll wait. Uh, moving on. Uh, wetland protection. Uh, we'll move on from in the book. It's called This Position of Properties to Fund Unknown. Uh, this is on hold, right? Uh, that will, yeah, we'll put that one on hold too, yeah. Yeah, we'll uh, wait on that, and then the next, the act acquisition. Uh, what's the next one? Yeah. The next one is the acquisition of land and parcels for highway purposes is also, um, has not been voted by this. Board, yeah, so and I, I don't know what those parcels are to to Mark's point. We, we should get some clarification there. Oh, here's the design, the water design. Okay. Uh, Next one, uh, water department, physical year. Do you want me to, uh, there's no cost. Associated. No, there is a cost. Uh, I mean, uh, well, there's pa no cost there's, yeah, but, but what, is it on your score sheet somewhere? It is, it's on uh, number 21. Oh, okay. Okay, you got that covered. Then, vote right? Correct. Yeah, no, we're not going to yeah, vote, no. Right. Uh, there is a cost, and I believe it's 300000 but we'll verify that. Uh, stabilization fund. Uh, so, to see if the town will raise it. Okay, oh, stabilization fund on this one. There was a lot of discussion on the stabilization fund, and I believe the selectmen aren't going to make a contribution they, this year. Yeah, the board of selectmen last night in their meeting, the board of selectmen requested removing the stabilization from fund from the free cash and replace it with zero, and they voted five zero to yeah. do that. Uh, why don't we hold on that one too again? Yeah, till, till, we, till we see, yeah, it, we maybe we'll, we'll hold on that one. Mm -hmm. So basically, just uh, I wanted to clarify, they basically freed up that money to just cover regular general expenses. Yeah, I believe the amount was three hundred. It was here, and uh, it was three hundred eighty-four thousand. This is a, usually an annual contribution. The stabilization fund for folks in the audience out there who may be listening to now or, or later is basically our, the, 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 the rainy day fund for the town. And they quoted a number last night. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, so it's, it's basically. Like five million or something, five and a half they're million. They're saying in this year we have to figure a way to save or cut some money out of the budget. And so they were looking at every option. In this particular case, they said that while they were, I mean, they do support contributing to that fund on a yearly basis, but thought that this year they could um, forego that. And they said, I'm just looking through my notes, sorry. There's a lot of money in that fund correctly. It's a, currently it was over a couple million dollars. Oh, it's like, it's like five and a half million. Yeah, it's I mean, a lot it's, of money. It's in our budget book, and but. we wait to vote? To yeah. Draft? Yeah. Sure. That's, 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 that's I'm trying to just update you what they had. And I want to keep about. people in the audience too informed of what the stabilization fund is. Uh, not everybody knows. So, and I want, but it's uh, okay. We'll move on. OPED trust fund. We'll move on from this one too. There was discussion on OPED last night, but until we get final uh, numbers and, and what the selectmen want to do. Uh, okay, now we're into community preservation acts, which we voted on. All of them except two. Uh, two of them. We two of them we did not vote on. We did not vote on. Uh, well, let me find it. What page? Part time housing coordinator. Yeah, what page is that? That's. Uh, That's on page 31 in the middle. Did we vote to N R P F I them? Yeah. Yeah, That's because part. I think right, Mark. That was because we didn't know if the housing advocate was approved. What happens to this one? Right. So we just we'll just pass it by because that, that hasn't been answered yet. Okay, and no one wants to reopen it. Right? Oh, we could reopen. I mean, but I'd rather hold it. Yeah. Did you want to reopen it? I mean, because I okay, that's right. You abstained anyway. So uh, that's what this is, and we've got two slots in there for two housing coordinators, and we need clarification from the uh, from the selectmen. Uh, the only one that we, else we did not vote on was uh, the pickleball. pickleball courts and basketball courts. And I'm trying to find that. In what page? Oh, here it is, page 33. But we did vote to 10 or PFI. Right. Yeah. Pending further pickleball. information. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the information we were waiting on was 
wasn't it just a follow-up? The action we took the other day, or you took, was to validate that it was both pickleball and basketball. Oh, no, what Mark was talking about the housing coordinator. Oh, I thought we would move. No, pickleball. Pickleball? Okay. Yeah, so we also, we, we voted to okay. not vote because for pending further information, and the information that we discussed in our last meeting that was unclear was, was it for both pickleball and basketball or just pickleball because the original, the warrant itself said only pickleball right. when in fact we've confirmed that it's both. Yes, and they did change the warrant. I, I spoke to them the next day and they did change right. it. Right, so we, if somebody wants to reopen it, we could yes, vote we on it. Yes, we definitely want to reopen it. Yeah. Yeah. So, the changes are on page 33. Yes. So if you want to make a motion on to reopen. Um, I'd like to make a motion to reopen, reconsider, reconsider. reconsider the Community Preservation Act pickleball slash basketball project at Brooks Park. Seconded. 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 The motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay. I'd like to take a vote on this one. Aye. Karen. Mark. Aye. Dan. Aye. Angelo. Mark. Abstain. Abstain again. And Dale. Oh, aye. Aye. And I'm an aye. That's six to one. Okay. <coughs> Motion's been made to reconsider. And now we'd like to make a motion to consider. Uh, yeah. So I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt the Community Preservation Act pickleball slash basketball project at Brooks Park article to see if the town will vote to appropriate $50,997 from the FY 2021 certified undesignated fund balance and one hundred and ninety four thousand five hundred and three dollars from the FY 2023 anticipated revenue for a total appropriation of two hundred and forty five thousand to fund the town of Harwich pickleball slash basketball project at Brooks Park. Seconded. Uh, okay. it's a, yeah, that's, so that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Can you talk about this? Yeah. It's been motioned, made, and seconded. Uh, any discussion, Angelo? Yes, I, I think we have a problem here. The recreation department showed up and said they wanted to build these yes. two things, and obviously they are going to have to rent, if you will, use use of that. The what? Uh, they're, they're going to have to get money from the people who are using the. Well, that's up to them. Is it, or should or should they not? to go in with it having discussed and figured out how much they should be charging and how much of that would be work cover the cost of, of what it's going to cost us to do this they they you know because i know yep. you use them they're very low in their costs and and the, when they ask to build something fine you can build it how much are you going to pay back on mm -hmm. it maybe they only pay two dollars back but Otherwise, it's it's not a right way of doing things. You go to the harbor master and you, and, you, and you, he does something and he changes the the, 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 the charges, so you cover it. And, and that's the only way we're going to do that kind of work. Otherwise, I'll vote against it doing it because I don't want to pay people to play pickleball on, on my money. That's fine. Yeah, that's 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 you a know, perfectly a valid so that, point. It, it, it's and I think that as a town, every time a company, a town section comes up and wants to build something, and they get when they collect the funds, they have to discuss whether they want to do the funds, what how much it would be or how little it would be. But they just walked right by it. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. Uh, I can I can respond. Uh, Karen or Dale or anyone else that want to comment on this? Well, I'm not sure if that's being consistent with the way other right. aspects of uh, Bricks Park are, are, are considered and funded. Uh, I'm not sure, but I don't think there's anything in a warrant that requires that the Recreation Department shall establish user fees for use of White House Field. Right. And they it, won't, I mean, it typic, it's not normal for a basketball court to charge people to use it. It's an open court for the community. Yeah, that would be tough same with, control. I mean, same with pickleball in theory. I mean, there are some programs that leverage the pickleball courts, but on off times, it's available for anybody in the community to use. So it's a 
there's a four hour, I think it's a four hour window in the mornings I mean, where it's for the program, but the rest of the day it's for anybody to use. Parents don't get charged for using the playground. Correct. Or the tennis courts, or the or ball the fields, yeah. or the soccer fields, or the baseball fields, the football fields. Uh, I see your point, Angela, and I, I, I know what you're saying. It's, uh, and, and plus, this, these, these funds, they are coming from taxpayer money, but this is coming from CPC funds. This is the 3% surcharge on your property tax. Uh, so they, I mean, to say that they're not, it's like free cash. It's not free cash. It's a 3% surcharge on your property. But I understand what you're getting at, and Angela, I, yeah, 100%. I mean, I mean, you've been pretty consistent about saying, how much is it costing us to operate these recreational facilities or what have you, and how much are we collecting in revenue, if any? And, you, I mean, that's, you've said that in, in previous meetings. Well, let me and move it in another direction. Uh, if you look at the document on the uh, gentleman they want to hire for the cultural center. Yes. Uh, I or lady. Or lady. Or lady. <laughs> If you, you can't. You don't know whether this person is to spend all the money he wants in the world. Well, or, I think we all have issues with that. So, but what I'm saying is, they don't. They have to cover some saying something. He should be helping to reduce our costs by 10 percent or whatever, or he can spend whatever he wants. This has no control over him. I could take over. And people would come in and I, I, I and want to wholeheartedly. There's nothing in there that's which holds it. that position responsible for. And making if if you want to hold the cultural, I don't get, yeah, yeah I, no, I, no, I, we we, we, we will get into it, Dan and Andrew. I mean, if you want to, that's a Warren article later on, you know what I'm and we'll it's we'll get into concept. it. Yeah, I agree, and 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 like well, Dan says, it's I no, believe no. we are. It's different. No, it's the, different. The fee schedule is 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 inconsistent. I mean, people go to Red River Beach, they go swimming. They don't pay anything, except for a beach sticker, but I can go down the Red River now and jump in the water. I don't have to pay. But I understand your point. Uh, and the pickleball players do pay a fee. Now, whether that's the adequate fee, I don't know. But fee structure for all the town programs, I think, need to be looked at. Not just one particular... Are you suggesting that they don't have to pay for the golf course? No, that they do. No, I'm saying no. But they shouldn't have to. The pickleball players shouldn't have to pay for the whole cost no, of the pickleball. But what, I, what I'm saying is, that they, they, the town does charge some sport activities. Yeah. yeah. They go to water. So it's not that we just made this up. No, I so, agree. Uh, sure, they they charge for golf. They charge for the waterways. No, I don't consider golf a public service. Whereas taking your kids to the playground, I'm that's a service about, provided I've not by the never town. said anything about the taking them to the playground. Mm -hmm. I know, but you're, yeah. you're, 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 you're making a blanket statement about... That the town has the right to do that on anything they do, but they make, you, you, and then you make a vote. You don't do it on, on that, you do it on things that... You decide you whether it's a public service already being funded out of taxpayer dollars, or whether you need to establish a user fee for that purpose. And, so and they do establish a user fee. Now, the recreation sets that user fee. And, and, and the pickleball program, as I've mentioned before, this, this particular article hits two uh, segments of the population. Uh, the pickleball players uh, are usually uh, aging senior, sen senior citizens of the town. Uh, the program supports over 400 members. Uh, that pay what they're asked to pay. Uh, the basketball court is usually played by the, the youth of the town. And every time I've been playing pickleball over there, the basketball courts are, are, are full. And they're expanding the courts. They have one and a half courts there now. They're going to expand it to two full courts. Just relative to the basketball courts, too? I mean, it is a just a, a community court. But I know, like, there's a lot of basketball camps, like paid camps that go through the Cape. And I suspect, I don't know 100%, but I suspect if one of those guys running the camps said, I want to be able to reserve the outdoor courts, they, 
um, Eric would charge them a fee because it would prevent other public citizens from using that court. So, and that's why the pickleball players are charged the fee for the morning because they reserve the court. So anytime you have to reserve a court, you would be charged a fee, but just general use by anybody is not is not the same. It's a different concept, as I understand it. That's how I see it anyway. Oh, absolutely, yeah. okay. As far as I know, no one pays to use the tennis courts there. If, but if there was a tennis camp that somebody, and I have to keep saying this, because if there was somebody wanted to run a tennis camp, which is not out of the question, I'm assuming if they went to Eric and said, I want to reserve the tennis courts from 8 to 10 for six weeks in the summer, he would charge them a fee to do that because it takes it away from the general public. Or a tennis league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Same kind of, yeah. same theory, yeah. And, and, and the pickleball court now, I mean, the, the sport, it's the fastest growing sport in America right now, and it's going down. I know the high school plays over there. Uh, so uh, I, I see your point, Angela, and, and I would be a, an advocate of looking at the fees town-wide on programs. I, I think that's, John? That, that's right. I'm sorry. Yes? Hi, this is Elizabeth Harder. Hi, Elizabeth. Uh, just to clarify, this is a CPC article? Correct. So you can either go to amend or accept and adopt, but you can't change it at all. Correct. Right. I, that's, oh, yeah. That's yeah. correct. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. I, yeah. We've made a motion. So it, yeah, it, to accept and adopt. But I, any, any, it's it's going to go to town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to make one comment. Sure. And then I'll be quiet. That's okay. No, and no, I, I, I will. I, Since when? I concur on your fee no. valuation. This town has been wonderful for years and years and not charged people for tons of things. You go to a lot of places, a lot of places, a lot of towns, they charge for th basketball, they charge for tennis, they charge for this, they charge for that. And they're doing it because they need to keep their money together. We are, we are spending a ton of money in raising our taxes and raising the taxes because we're taking money out of the residents through taxes to, to go build this. Somebody's got to start thinking about how, how much it, it should, what, sh what should be taxed and which should be have a fee. We haven't done it. That's See, all. I look at it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. But I look at it, does the town have any opportunities to raise revenue by charging user fees or, or what have you? And I think that's a study worth. Is what? A study worth. Oh, I do. I, I've mentioned it yeah. for years that yeah. we, we, should have, we should do it. And to Angela's point, I mean, we can never recoup the costs of, of some of these fields. No. But is it, is it and they usually do it. They, I think they, they go out and look at the surrounding towns and do a comparison and adjust, adjust accordingly. You never, if, you're not, if you have to charge indirect costs back to these programs, forget it. Yeah. It ain't going to work. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, like to move along, uh, it's, but um, any other discussion on this particular article? Anyone else in the field? Dale? Yeah, John, I just had one quick, I, I just wanted to point something out on the third line of the article. It describes the total appropriation as being $245 million. Oh, no. No, it's thousands. It's got, got, it's got three senses in it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a decimal place. place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh I correct. see. It's not a it's not a comma. It's a decimal point. <laughs> okay. It's worth pointing out so somebody doesn't. Well, I don't want Angelo to have a heart attack. We're yeah. spending two hundred and forty-five million on these pickleball courts. <laughs> 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 It'll have to happen with the cultural center. Okay. It's, it's a dome pickleball court, Angelo. <laughs> but thanks, Dale. Uh, no more discussion. I entertain a vote. Karen. Aye. Mark. Aye. Dan. Aye. Angelo. No. Uh, it's it's saying Dale. Aye. I'm, I'm an I. Okay. You got five one one. Five one one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And thanks, Angela. I, I agree. I concur with your uh, revenue should be looked at, and I think the rec committee does that periodically. So. Okay. Uh, rest of the Community Preservation Act we've all voted on. Uh, and they do a wonderful job, the CPC folks. I mean, they, they, they vet these things and uh, 
They do a wonderful job. It's in, I think I mentioned previous things that the town has received millions of dollars in, uh, in benefits from all these. Yes, and I'd like to say that David and the committee members there, they do an excellent job. Oh, yeah. Job. Yeah, Dave and I, Nixon, the chairman, uh, we talk <laughs> very frequently on these things. And I've attended numerous of their meetings. Uh, tremendous job. It's, it's done a lot of good. Okay, next one. Uh, Amend the bylaws. Um, Spruce Woods, we've done that one. Amend the general bylaws. I don't know what the heck. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll pass on this one. This might be a, a standard. What is this? That's, the, an, that's, oh, this is that's in the list uh -huh. um, up front. That's interesting. Oh, now it's here, too. It's, um, it's which, the, which one? Uh, annual Department Revolving Funds Authorization. No, uh, page 34. 34. This one. Yeah, that's the one we just went by. Because that's... <coughs> That's the one. The is the bylaws. Yeah. And we're, we're going to pass on that? Is that what we're yeah. doing? Okay. And then uh, okay. the next one is about the annual department revolving funds authorization, which the Board of Selectmen mm. has not. Okay, let me take voted a look at that. This is a. I think we. Well, maybe, well we available for expenditure, disposal. Disposition of fund it's, balance. It's related to spending limits. I think we need to wait for that. Yeah, that's it. spending limits look in line, but why don't we hold on to that one too? That's an easy one to come back to. What number is that? 51. That's 51 on the page 36. Page 36, yeah. 36. Yes. Okay, well, now we're down. We're into the citizens' initiation uh, petitions. And this is where I'm going to need input from all the members here. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll start with the first one that's on the page here, page 37. Uh, Karen, why don't you make a motion? Um, before, we can just talk can about I it. Can I say something before I do that? Yeah. Um, when we met the other day, we said we, we needed some information from the person who submitted it, Daniel Baker. Yeah. Did we? Uh, he spoke last night. Well, that's it, yeah. And I had my note. I had books in here with notes, and but uh, yeah, to, to your point, uh, and that's what, on all these, we can ask the petitioners to come in, but on this one last, and I have spoken to Daniel Baker, uh, inviting him to come in and speak, and he said he'd be more than happy to, but he also was being called in before the selectmen. Yeah. Uh, and he did. He came in and gave a very uh, a good uh, presentation, and I think the selectmen actually approved it, didn't it? Yeah. Because it was... Night yeah, because it was a non-binding. Uh, that was the legal. Private home school, private school. If you remember, yeah, that was a non. I think the selectman approved. It is non-binding. It has to go before the state legislature. Yeah. it's got a long winding road to go there. Yeah, okay. and and that was the opinion of town council too. Was it was going to be a non-binding resolution? So we can do a. Um, uh, what the, basically what this is, uh, Mr. Baker, like I say, he's more than happy to come in and, and speak to us and. If you wanted to come in, I can bring him in. Uh, it's basically he's looking for like charter schools. Right now, uh, in, in school choice, he wants to extend school choice uh, choices to in-home schooling people if they're, if they're certified. And if you send your child or children to a private school, you, you want to take school choice money with you too an undetermined amount, as far as I know right now. Right. So if, if you decide to homeschool your, your child, uh, if it's treated like a charter school, if, you're, if your children go, decide to go to Lighthouse Charter over in East Harwich, the school committee, the school department has to pay for that tuition. And that tuition is about $18,000. That leaves the school department budget, follows that child over to Lighthouse School. I think Mr. Baker here is trying to get funds to do the same thing. If you elect to teach your child at home, there would be an amount determined that would follow that child home, literally home, uh, and that parent would be reimbur would be you know would get a voucher, I guess is the appropriate term for that funding. Uh, and if you send your child to a private school, you would also get a voucher for the cost of that private school. Uh, and there was much discussion last night. There was a lot of folks there. And uh, 
There was not a, a vote by the Board of Selectmen. I thought they voted 5 to 0. I didn't make a note of it. Okay. Do you so, remember? I forgot my note. Why don't we hold this one? I agree on the discussion, uh, but they did we not. Can, they we can vote. Do you want me to bring Mr. Baker in? I mean, the only, only reservation I have there, yeah, I'm happy to bring him in if, if the board wants him to, is, is Thursday night we'll t uh, we've got uh, uh, a budget public hearing on the budget and capital budget by Joe Powers who's going to present the budget that the selectmen rearranged Monday night to the public and to us. Uh, that leaves us after that night, two nights, uh, next Tuesday and, and next Thursday to fully vote on all the remaining articles in this budget. Uh, John, could we, could we just wait and ask the, the board, ask the committee here to review the tail end of last night's meeting? Actually, Dale, that's an excellent, yep, yeah, that's an excellent. There's a very thorough discussion. Yeah. There is, you know, people oh, you the, uh, yeah. there are yeah. other contributors who made a good argument. Um, and so I, I thought, I think bringing him in again would be redundant on his part. And I think the information is already there for us. That's an excellent point, then, uh, Dale. Thank you for uh, for pointing that out. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. My question is, what is the Massachusetts Department of Education's policy on homeschool kids? Well, that's to to, to Mark Keller's point. It has to go to a state legislation, and they have to approve it. It's a, it's, a, it's it's not a quick deal by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, I see. If He's saying that approve, they have to go to the legislature. Yes, yes. The policy is they're not uh, included currently, yeah. and that he yeah. wants them to be included so that they get yeah. some compensation for uh, what they do. And it was a very, there was a lot of feedback in the meeting, so it is a good suggestion for you guys to look at it. And the only reason I wouldn't vote on it now is because I don't, I don't have confirmation. I don't, I didn't take a note that the select board did. I, I thought they, I, I took. But it would be good that yeah. you guys all watch that part yes. of it. Okay. Yeah. And, and in fact, in fact, watched the whole selections meeting three and a half hours. It was very good. It covers a lot of, of a lot of topics on the, especially towards the tail end, where the budgets were being moved around. It's I'm, I haven't watched it yet. I was involved in some other things today, oh but uh, I to watch it now. but I will watch it. But that's an excellent point. Thank you for pointing that out. John, sure, one quick thing. Yeah. The way that is worded, I can see helping out uh, the books. The state now does have help out with transportation for parochial schools, but the, the state legislature would, would never approve to pay tuition for private schools like Catholic schools, nor would they pay for tuition for teachers that are homeschooled, because you'd be basically taking a big chunk of money away from public schools, and I don't see them ever doing that. I mean, give approval, let them take it up there, but I, I yeah. think it's a moot I, point. Okay. Mark. Maybe books, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so we'll uh, yeah. all watch. I work for state education in New York for 30 plus years, so I know we are. <laughs> so we'll all uh, watch the tape and make our own conclusions on it. But uh, I did want to send Mr. Baker an invitation. I feel it's, uh, it's, it's his due. Uh, I encourage citizens to get involved, uh, and he's more than happy. Uh, uh, next one is defray the costs of Chase Library. We did vote on that one already. Next one, again, next one is prohibit hunting in Bell's Neck conservation area. Uh, area. I did speak to Carol Kucha Stone. Uh, she'd be willing to come in, but to Dale's point, there was a lot of discussion on Carol's uh, topic last night. And this one, the selectmen did vote to indefinitely postpone, I remember. Uh, yeah, they voted. They, the Board of Selectmen last night voted no to support except and adopt, and they recommended an indefinite postponement with, and voted 5 0 in support of a. Postponement. In indefinite postponement. Yeah. So even though they voted a no to accept and adopt, it still goes to town meeting. It's, these are private petitions. Yeah. They cannot be pulled by the selectmen. Right. They right. have to go to town meeting. Yeah. Okay. And what we, well, even if we take the position of indefinite postponement too, the, no one, either the select board or the finance board can't make a positive motion. So someone from the audience would have to get up to the mic and make a positive motion. Yeah, there will be. And and, uh, and Carol again said she'd be happy to come in, but I think to Dale's point, it was a lengthy discussion on it. In the essence of time, I think we should uh, look at that tape, and you can make your own. Okay. Conclusion. And even Miss Stone uh, said in her presentation, I, I think, that it would be a non-binding vote too. Right. 
Right. And that's what that was recommendation from town council too yeah. that it would be a non-binding vote. So uh, next one. Excuse me, just for the yep. minutes. What do I say we're doing on that one? We just no action. No, no action. Yeah. No action. Yeah. Uh, other than eventually people. Eventually we have to vote. Pardon? Eventually we have. To yes. Vote. Oh, eventually we we do have to vote. Yes. Uh, next one is the protect West Howard School District. Uh, what uh, protect historical West Howard schoolhouse with historical restriction. Uh, the petitioner on that uh, is Miss, uh, where's the petitioner? Oh, uh, Sally Obano, that's right. Uh, so, do you remember what the? Yeah, so the at is? the Board of Selectmen meeting last night on protect the historic West Howard schoolhouse with historic restriction and the one after it, which is sell historic West Harwich schoolhouse using full provisions of Massachusetts procurement law 30B. Both of those came up briefly. Um, there was nobody at the meeting to speak to this. Right. So no, she was not. She was not so for both of them. The board of selectmen voted to indefinitely postpone, um, and they voted three yes, two indefinitely postpone, and two no. So it was indefinitely. It was indefinitely postponed. And we can follow the same thing we did for the for the school uh, the school uh, choice thing, and for the uh, Bell's Neck. If you folks want to review this and see what Sally's sure. this these two articles have been perpetually on the warrants for stuff. The selectmen have issued RFPs, and, and they can it'd probably be a good education to read that. Again, I've spoken to Sally. I extended an offer in there uh, to come in, but. It would be good to view this part. You should watch the whole meeting. But this part, it was interesting, the comments that came from the Board of Selectmen, because this one, the schoolhouse, has been on, been going on for like 20 years or something. I don't know. Yeah. Everybody said a for a long, long time. And so there's some strong opinions about whether on this. So I think somebody you guys should listen. This is like a Mark's article, the Air and Fisheries. <laughs> yes, I think, I think it is. But the selectmen are getting close, I think, or have issued RFPs and, and stuff. So, uh, uh, did that hurt your tongue? Pardon? Uh, it is I'm tough. not going to say anything. So we have one more. Which we have is the cultural. Yeah, uh, I'm just looking at something. Okay, uh, next one is the last uh, Warren article, and thank you very much, folks, for, for getting through this. We made a lot of headway tonight, and Karen's got a lot of work to do. You know, I've already <laughs> updated. She's already on? Okay, <laughs> good for you. Uh, the next one I do it now. is uh, the study best, uh, yeah, study best used options for the former Harwich Middle School, including recommendations for financial uh, self-sufficiency. Uh, the petitioner, Richard Gunnison, came in before the t town last night, I mean the selectman last night, gave a very detailed presentation. Uh, the selectman did vote on it to indefinitely postpone it. They voted to, yeah, they, they voted to indefinitely postpone by a vote of four yeses mm -hmm. to one no. no. And, uh, and there were uh, folks in the audience that spoke uh, in favor of the selectman's indefinitely postponement. Uh, Richard, again, Gunson gave a very detailed uh, presentation on this one. This one, I do feel uh, that Rich, we should bring Richard in here and, and speak to us. I, I mean, I will put a time limit on him uh, just because we could go on for hours on this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think this is a very important private petition. It's got uh, a lot of ramifications that, that all the articles do. Uh, but this one uh, uh, has a potential for a huge amount of, of capital costs in the future. Mm -hmm. And I would like uh, Richard to uh, have him come in his, and state his case. As I read into the minutes, uh, into, the, into the open meeting violation, uh, I had asked the selectmen for a capital plan and for a, what I call a business plan on this. Uh, and there was arguments last night that the plan was sufficient that uh, hiring the cultural director was the plan. And uh, so I think you need to look at this one too. Uh, 
uh, and I, but I do believe we should bring in Mr. Gunderson uh, for this, and I'll put a, if, if the board so directs me to, uh, and I will put a time limit on him. And uh, I think the next three of our meetings are in the big room too. I'm not anticipating a big crowd for that one, but we may get one, uh, especially if it's advertised, and, and which I plan, because I have to get uh, agendas out tomorrow or Thursday for next week. So uh, I'd like to entertain a motion, Karen, uh, for Mr. Gunderson to come in and give us a, a, a talk on this. And you need a motion? I don't know if we do or not, or if we can just generally agree, I'm happy with yeah, that. Okay, don't okay. Uh, what would you think of an adequate time thing? Half hour? Yeah. If I speak to him and... Uh, two minutes. Huh? Or just let him go? 15 no. minutes. 15 minutes. 15. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll mention that, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. And, uh, I would, uh, he spent time, a lot of, there was a lot of time last, I was, again, when you watch the video, it, it'll give you a fill in a lot of questions, so we should only need 15. If it's yeah. people watch that video, we won't rehash what we talked about last yeah. night. Sounds yeah. like we should watch the entire meeting. For yeah, you probably time. should. Yeah. <laughs> three, three and a half hours. Three, three and a half hours. hours. I lived it then. The first, <laughs> the first part, though, is, yeah. is the standard stuff. So if you look at their agenda, you can skip yeah. through a lot of the beginnings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, I've done that. No, I, I know. So, yeah. the, but, so it's not a, you don't have to watch the whole Get the scorecard. Most of it happened uh, when they started. Uh, deliberating towards the end of their uh, agenda. And uh, so I'll, I'll get in touch with Mr. Gunderson. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if, if 15 minutes or whatever is adequate. And it, since it is a posted agenda, we may get folks that are uh, in, uh, have an alternate opinion on, on Mr. Gunderson's opinion that may come in, which will afford them the time. I don't know who those folks are, uh, but uh, uh, I do know who some proponents are, and I, I will contact them to let them know that we're having this meeting and extend the, the invitation. I, I do have one question. Sure. If Mr. Gunderson's proposal is adapted. What happens, because that study would probably take six to, nine, six to nine to a year of time to come in. What happens to the cultural center in the meantime? Because Mr. Powers has said he needs a person. Now the assistant town administrator is working on it. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be, you know, a question that people would need to know is what happens if, if you vote for that study, what happens in the interim to the cultural center? That's a good question. Uh, they, and I, had, I don't have the other a answer other than we can ask uh, the town administrator tomorrow night. Uh, we are going to be talking about uh, the, t the town budget last night and, and his positions are in his budget. Uh, I don't know. I can't speak for the town administrator, but uh, it, it has been running for five years now with part-time staff, and I don't know. But uh, I think that's the issue. That, that's one of the main driving points of, of the cultural center. But we'll, we can ask that. You can ask them uh, Thursday night, uh, Mark. Uh, so I will. Let me just make some notes here, Mr. Gunderson's Okay. And uh, okay. So that text takes care of that. I don't know how many we went through, Karen. Any? We went through all of them. There's a, I mean, obviously, we're dependent on some okay. information coming down. But I, I think the good news, too, is that uh, we'll, we'll get information quickly because the, the selectmen are in the same boat as we are. You know, they have just next week to vote on these things, too. Nine days. Yeah. As, as someone famously says, nine days to February to March 31st, right? Uh, uh, but we, we made good discussion, I mean, good progress last night, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, next on the agenda, if anyone has anything else on the budget, warrants, or does anybody in the audience have questions on budgets or warrants, uh, please answer. Uh, is, is G, <laughs> and discuss and possible vote on a new vice chairman and a finance committee appointment to capital outlay. And... Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion for this, Karen. Oh, sorry. I'd like to make a motion to discuss and make a possible vote on a new vice chairman and finance committee appointment to the capital outlay committee. Second. Second. The motion's been made and seconded. Uh, what this is about is we had a, 
uh, Brian Wiener, as you know, has, has resigned from the board, and uh, he was vice chairman. So we have a vice chairman's slot open. Brian was also on the capital outlay committee uh, as an appoint, appointee of the committee. Uh, I do not anticipate uh, any more capital outlay meetings this year, but there, there might be when the dust settles on moving things out of capital into operating, operating the capital. I, I don't know if that means FY23 capital budget has to be reopened and revoted because it, things are changing there or the five-year plan is affected. I don't know that answer. Uh, so I, and we, I would like to appoint a member uh, uh, to that committee. Uh, we can do the vice chairman one first. Uh, and this would be, we, it's just going to be for the, the, uh, the duration of until town meeting. I fully expect to be here <laughs> until <laughs> at least May 2nd. <laughs> uh, uh, fully to do that, fully able to keep, keep, uh, carry out my duties and responsibility as chairman now. But if something should happen where I could not uh, perform those duties for whatever reason, uh, I believe we, we should have a backup. And uh, if anyone wants to raise their hand and say they accept that responsibility, even if it, it, the responsibility role would be just just in case I cannot fulfill my duties as chairman, that someone could step in and do it. Uh, and this would just be to May second, because then May second, uh, my term is up, and I think somebody else's term is up, so that the board will reorganize and. Uh, so, anyone want to step up and raise their hand? Dan? I'd like to make a comment. Okay. I think we have three relatively new members yeah. on the committee. And from what I can see, they, they really serve a very excellent uh, members to the, con make excellent contributions to the committee. And uh, I would look for one of those to step forward. <laughs> <laughs> do the newbies you know? do, do, do the do have a, a retort to that? I, 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 I'm happy. I, you know, I, to, to, I concur, Dan, with, with your comments uh, on Mark Kelleher and Karen Doucette. I am very pleased. And Dale. Uh, well, and Dale's, no, Dale's not, been around for all. He's old yeah. hat, you know. So, yeah. uh, But <laughs> Dan and Karen have really stepped up and have helped me tremendously. Dale, uh, Dan has, I mean, uh, Mark has taken on the responsibility of the minutes. Uh, he's done a tremendous, tremendous job doing that. The poor guy, I bug him. Uh, what about this, Mark? And he comes over to my house and we work on it. And so I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And, and he, he volunteered, too. I mean, he didn't even be asked to do it. Brian couldn't do it for one night. I think he was absent, and Mark stepped right in. So I concur there. Karen, uh, same thing. She's done an excellent job. She put the spreadsheet together. And I bug her, too, on the telephone. Yeah, you did. <laughs> no, uh, she's a tremendous help. I'm not an Excel spreadsheet person at all, and Brian did that work for our group, and it's very helpful as a score sheet card. So uh, I did have, to carry it one step further, I did have Karen in mind for the Capital Outlay Committee, but she, she can take both. I mean, Brian did oh, both yeah. too. So that's, that's not a thing. And it's just to carry out until March 2nd. So if, uh, pardon? May 2nd. May, you said March. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to entertain uh, a recommendation, and then we'll vote. Uh, anyone want to recommend it, or Mark or Karen? Do you want to raise your hand, or or or? I'll do it if you need me to do it between now, and March, and May second. Yeah, I'm saying March. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, hearing no more discussion, Karen has graciously offered to step in as vice chairwoman. How's that? Or chair, chair. chair. Yeah, yeah. I call myself chair, so I can call you the chair. Too. <laughs> well, however you want to refer to yourself. Until May 2nd. <laughs> and May and to be uh, appointed to the Capital Outlay Committee. Who? Karen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, hearing uh, no further discussion, I'd like to entertain a vote on that. Karen, you uh, abstain. Well, can I make a motion? Sure, sure. I, I move to make Karen the vice chair and uh, person on the and second? Second. Second. The maiden seconded. Any further discussion? I'd like to take a vote. Mark? Aye. Angelo? Aye. Aye. Dan? Aye. 
I'm an eye, Dale. Aye. Uh, Karen, you can abstain or I can. Aye. Aye. There's nothing for two. You can <laughs> seven to zero. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Karen. It's really, uh, really, really good. Uh, uh, so that concludes the, the new business. Uh, I did have a couple items here. Uh, actually, I did have it, Dale. You, I, I had it in my notes. See, you folks, you must have looked at my notes, Dale. I had it in my notes at the bottom of the, what I sent out this afternoon to you. A couple of topics we talked about related to budgets and warrants. It's review last uh -huh. night. <laughs> review last night's three and a half hour Selectman's meeting. It's available on Channel 18. It's good viewing. And, uh, and Mark, Ka Mark uh, Karen, Mark, and I, but I'm glad you brought it up, Dale. That's an excellent decision. Uh, we voted uh, public, public hearing next Thursday. This, I mean, this coming Thursday, excuse me, uh, March 24th. Joe Powers is going to uh, give us a presentation on a public meeting on the capital uh, budget and the town plan. And, Budget. Hopefully, you'll have it uh, put together by then. At 6 p.m. on Thursday. At 6:30. 6:30. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, and as soon as we conclude that discussion, uh, close the public hearing. Uh, depending on the outcome, the time on that, we'll continue on on warrant articles. That's in the posted agenda. Uh, the last item I, I had for discussion is meeting times for for next week, uh, March 29th and 31st. Uh, we have traditionally been starting at 6.30 for no particular reason other than that's always been done. I would like to suggest maybe moving it up to 6 o'clock, if that's okay with folks. It's fine with me. Or, or any other time. Five, we can start really at any time we want. I mean, yeah. 6 o'clock is fine or? Yeah, 6 is fine. 6, okay. And then uh, why don't we do that till 6? That'll help us. I think we've got a good jump. Which one's that, John? Sorry. It'll, it'll, I haven't posted the meeting yet. Okay. It'll be for the, it'll be next week's meeting for oh, the 29th fine. Fine. Yeah. and uh, 22nd. Uh, we've got big budgets. I mean, we've, we've approved some things, but the big budgets is the operating budget, of course, and the Monomoy school budget. You know, combined, those budgets are roughly probably $60 million of the budget. So we'll wait to hear back from the schools. We'll know more, probably more Monday night, how the selectmen going on their warrants. Uh, Karen will get this list put together, and I'll send it over to Joe uh, tomorrow or the next day, so he'll know where we stand and it can inform the selectmen. And they are going to use Karen's form on, for their scorecard. So with that being said, I really appreciate uh, you listening to the open meeting violation uh, response. And, and thank you uh, for that, and thank you for your dedication to these war and articles. So, with that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I move to adjourn. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All those opposed? None. Seven to zero. The meeting is over. There will be no further discussion. Thank you all.